Welcome back to another Mining Pod. I got Matt Kimmel. He's always with me. Can't get away from him. We're talking about a lot of things this week. Public miners going boom. Got some news from Compute North. And we're going to wrap up with a little discussion on S19XPs and M50s. Is there a price premium for it? Or is that all just fake news? We'll get into that and more in just a second. Or Matt, how you doing? How's your week been? Good. Good, good. Descriptive. Descriptive. My week has been awesome. Just kidding. All the news with all these miners blowing up has been troublesome and made life at a mining company a little bit more busy than I would like. Uh, but that is okay. Let's go over these three miners, Argo, Core Scientific, and Iris Energy before we dive into Compute North and the news that Coindesk published. Uh, as listeners of this podcast will know, we talked about all three of those miners uh, on an episode earlier this week with Anthony Power going over their debt positions why they are in the current circumstances they are in and how they might get out of it. Uh, just for a review, Argo Blockchain tried to line up some financing for about $27 million in uh, shares of its equity that it was selling to a third party. That fell through. The stock price then cratered because of that. Core Scientific sent out a warning about two weeks ago, uh, which led to a decrease in its stock price by about 80%. I think it's trading around $0.20 cents as of now. And then lastly, Iris Energy put out a notice earlier this week that an SPV, a special vehicle for purchasing ASICs from NYDIG, might go into default because they don't have the capital lined up to pay for that debt obligation. So we have three miners with a lot of problems going on right now. I think between all of them, they have about 25 exahash or more. I'm pausing there a little bit because I'm trying to do the mental math, but it's like 25 plus exahash online on the network. So it's a decent amount of the Bitcoin network. Going to throw it over to you. I, we have a lot of this information already out there. So we'll, we won't we will dwell on it too much for today's podcast because I think most people have, have digested already. But I want to throw it over to you, get your take on it. Is there anything new that we can add to these stories? So first, I'll start with Core and Argo, right? Some of the distressed miners. And what happened here is largely the same story. They're having some liquidity cash issues now because they've sold all their coins, right? Recently, they have a bunch of debt that they need to pay off, right? But what they did was they produced a bunch of coins back when times were good and they could have realized the gains, shored up their cash holdings to pay down all this debt now. Instead, the price of the coins fell, they sold them all, at a loss compared to what they produce them at. And so instead of being in sort of a good financial position um, to take care of their, their leverage, they're not. And so they're facing sort of potential bankruptcy, right? The dominoes may continue to fall. Um, and then sort of in a reverse trend, Marathon, who had, you know, sort of idle inventory trouble, hosting provider issues, they were getting a lot of flack for producing basically solely off of coal in their hardened plant in Montana has now completely moved all their machines. They have um, a bunch of the most efficient XPs, and now they're continuing to grow by just incredible amounts. I think they're up to 7 exahash per second compared to, I think, it was about 3.8 last month. So they're just continuing to grow and grow um, and have high uh, expectations for for next year as well. So they're kind of the, the silver lining and the bright spot in a really dark buying market right now. Yeah, Marathon's numbers were pretty nice. And that's a miner that's been taking a beating in the public's image right now. Normally, it's because you know they're, they're the biggest miner out there or could be one of the biggest miners out there. And a lot of people have them in their stock portfolios, including a lot of hedge funds. So it's very easy to get exposure to Marathon. And they've had a lot of troubles over the last year. They made a very interesting decision to move out of the hard site in Montana because of ESG concerns. And they were hit with the Compute North news. But now we're looking at their update from October. It's extremely strong. There were seven extra hash now online. They're hodling all their coins. They have a good amount of cash on hand. And I think the most important thing is they actually lined up financing about a year ago. That'll carry them through for a few years. I made some very smart decisions with financing. And I think that's probably the biggest story coming out of all of this. If we're looking at Argo, Core Scientific, Iris, a lot of other miners, um, things Stronghold, Greenage, whatever else. There's a few other miners out there. They all went to these minor financing programs, took out ASIC back loans or against their facilities or against their Bitcoin. And that proved to be troublesome and difficult when interest rates went up because of the Fed's pivot into pushing up interest rates. Now we have Marathon on the other side that has this really cheap financing, can continue 
to operate, even though a lot of its fleet is still idle. And to next year, they're expecting to have more machines online. But let's leave that conversation where it's at. Let's actually turn to this Compute North news, which is definitely interesting and uh, a tough read for sure. As a disclosure, Compass Mining has worked with Compute North in the past. Uh, Compute North, of course, is in currently Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They're liquidating a lot of their assets. And uh, we have some new information about their finances that came out through this Chapter 11 program. Matt, I'm going to throw it over to you to get your take on the news and a rundown on it. So the big story that I think came out of these Compute North filings that on the day of bankruptcy, a bunch of bonuses got paid out to their exec to the tune of $3 million across, I think, six people. So, I mean, it's looking kind of bright for them right now. But for the creditors in this case, I would be really upset. It seems really slimy. Yeah, there's definitely a lot in here. So director went to the Coindesk article, which we'll link. But according to Coindesk, there's $613,000 to former CEO Dave Perel. Uh, he also owned a lot of businesses as subsidiaries or had involvement with them that were used by CompuNorth. So there's payments there. The CFO, the CCO, the CTO, the CLO, the CFO all received six figure plus salaries or bonuses from the payouts, which of course, as you said, that happened days before chapter 11 occurred. And we have a list of creditors as well, which includes large companies like Marathon Digital. I believe their exposure to Compute North was around $80 million. And that chapter 11 continues to go on. To me, this was definitely dispiriting to see something like this happening in the industry, just large sums of money going out the door to people right when your business is falling apart. Uh, CompuNorth had a great name in the industry. They were a very firm, established team with uh, working with a lot of counterparties that had great manufacturing, great equipment. And it's unfortunate that the bear market took them under. Uh, but seeing something like this is definitely frustrating. I'm wondering if we get any more information from CompuNorth on the payouts here, because there was not a response to Coindesk in this article. Maybe we'll find out more information later. What else we got? Okay, let's end the show with a little bit of a brighter spot. Let's talk about ASIC markets. ASICs, of course, have been going down a lot over the last year. Why? Well, Bitcoin not doing so great. And then it's very hard to get hosting still. And on top of that, there's been way too many machines made by all these manufacturers, which is pushing down uh, the cost of an ASIC. It's estimated about 100,000 ASICs alone sitting in Texas warehouses. And I've heard a number as high as 1 million ASICs globally that are still in boxes or just not online. That being said, we're seeing two new ASICs come to market right now, the What's Miner M50 and the Ant Miner S19 XP. These are higher efficiency, more powerful machines. A lot of people think that there's going to be a price premium for these machines, particularly not because uh, not only because that they can print more Bitcoin, but also because they can do it for cheaper, right? The energy efficiency is really important during a time when we have energy costs going up globally. So I'll punt this question over to you. Do you think there's going to be a price premium for these things? I'm a little dubious about it because I still think that S19J Pros and other machines like that, there's a glut of them. And so why not just buy those for a discount and save there as opposed to buy a bunch of S19 XPs? Yeah, I'm right there with you. And I think like maybe direct to manufacturer, these prices can sort of stay afloat. But we just saw, I think it was CleanSpark buy a bunch of distressed in-package S19J Pros from Argo for around $15 uh, dollars per terahalf, which is even below um, market estimates if, if you look at some of the data providers like, like hash rate index. So I think like we're gonna continue to see ASIC prices go down as like prices were already falling and miners are falling, like public listed miners are falling like dominoes, but also in the, in the private markets, so you have to expect that they're feeling the pain too, right? This is, there are industry-wide issues that are happening for miners right now. And so how, how can they produce cash outside, outside of um, Bitcoin, their holdings, right? What's the common ground? It's ASIC machines. And if you have a bunch of idle machines, you probably are gonna be in a position where you might have to sell them if, if um, you know, your income isn't, isn't uh, working out for you. I definitely agree with you on that point. I think that we haven't seen a bottom in terms of ASIC prices. And I don't know if there's going to be a price premium for these machines at this point. I think there's just too much supply. Like, yes, there might be some bottlenecks in getting machines on your hands, but 
that seems to be well enough machines to go around. The, the last point I'd throw people at is Nidig has about 50,000 machines just on the hand because of defaults on the ASIC back loans. And some of those machines are already in warehouses, already hashing. And so that's fine because they can get that Bitcoin. But some of those machines are not. They're just in packages. And so I'm sure they're going to liquidate them unless they want to boot up their own mining operation. I definitely would be keen to get... Maybe we get Nidig on the podcast, talk about what they're going to do with all these. When Nidig mining. When Nidig mining. They might get a bunch more from Iris here a bit. Yeah, I think that is something to watch for everyone out there. Just like in the spring, we saw a lot of liquid markets go into default or collapse with the collateral just being in so many different people's hands. ASIC markets are also in a similar position where I think we could see a lot of these loans made to miners start defaulting. We already are seeing that with the Iris news, right? But the market for it's a little bit more structured because there's physical infrastructure in set places with contracts under different US jurisdictions. So I think it's going to be a little bit cleaner than what we saw in the spring with Terra, 3AC, Genesis, all those guys. Uh, that's my prediction. But Matt, I'll hand it over to you for a last thought before we wrap up. I mean, it, that might be a strategic specific option for a miner, right? Like default on your loan, send the collateral and then buy it back, right? When ASIC prices go even lower, it's like a trade essentially, right? Mm-hmm. You can- at that margin. So it's kind of in the best interest for lenders, in, in my opinion right now at least, with the outlook for ASIC prices, to probably restructure. I agree with you. I think there's something to it. Anthony Power earlier on this week's podcast talked about that, saying Core Scientific and Argo might be actually trying to pull off that move. But that remains to be seen, so we'll see. But Matt, thanks again for joining us on The Mining Pod. We'll see everyone again next week on Tuesday. Thanks. Cheers.